Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, Sunday School Hour. If you turn to 31 in your hymnal, please. 31. He lives. But if you know this one at home, you're more than welcome to sing along. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living wherever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow ways. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow ways. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow ways. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Wonderful singing. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day and another opportunity at life. Lord, we just uh, ask you to please be with us this Sunday school hour, Lord, that you just please give us uh, the teaching that you want us to have, Lord. Lord, please be the pastor as he uh, teaches, and I just ask you to please give him the wisdom and knowledge and light, Lord, uh, to be able to teach. Lord, I just ask that you also have us to be uh, open and receptive to the word. Lord, I just pray uh, for those who haven't made it here yet, Lord, I just ask that you please bring them here safely. Lord, and I just pray that you please go with us. We go out the rest of our services this morning, Lord, that you just guide, lead, and direct us. Lord, and I pray all these things in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School class as we continue our study in the ABCs of Christian Maturity. And we are studying the Kingdom of God. The Kingdom of God. Letter K. And last time we stopped at uh, page 180 for those that have the book. And we covered uh, the Kingdom of God is comprised of people of faith and also the kingdom of God embraces Christian service and so today we're going to uh, cover where is the kingdom of God that is what we're going to learn today where is the kingdom of God so let's start in first Kings first Kings chapter 4 first Kings chapter 4 verse 24 First Kings four twenty four. First Kings 
chapter 4, let's, let's begin in verse uh, 21 first, and then we'll go to 24. 1 Kings 4, 21. The Bible says, And Solomon reigned over all the kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines, and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. And then verse 24, For he had dominion over all the region on the sides of the river, from Tipsa even to Asa, over all the kings on this side of the river, and he had peace on all sides round about him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege again to be able to meet freely and to study your word. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you teach us that you give us light and understanding, Lord God, so that we can comprehend what you have for us this morning. But not only to hear it, Lord, to be able to apply it to our lives and to be able to teach others also. Bless this lesson, Lord, Holy Spirit, of God guide us and lead us. We ask it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, as you notice here, when we read about Solomon's kingdom, we re we, we, we read about his uh, dimensions, okay? The dimensions or the territories of the kingdom. However, when it comes to the kingdom of God, okay, earthly kingdoms have a discernible locality, dimensions, and borders, like we read in this text. But what about the kingdom of God? Where is it? Where are its borders, okay? Where are its borders? Well, the first thing we're gonna learn is that the kingdom of God is intangible. The kingdom of God is intangible. That means that it cannot be touched. It is intangible. You cannot touch it, okay? Uh, and Luke chapter 17, and Luke chapter 17, the Lord Jesus talking about the kingdom of God, and Luke 17, look at verse number 20. Luke 17 and verse number 20, the Bible says, Jesus says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God, it, it is not come with observation, meaning you cannot see it. Okay? You cannot see it. You cannot observe it and say, Oh, there it comes. You can't see it. Okay? You cannot touch it. Also in verse 21, he said, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And so it is not here, nor is it there. And then look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse number 20. Pick it up at verse 19. Paul says, But I will come to you shortly. 1 Corinthians 4 19. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Okay? The kingdom of God is not in is not in word, but in power. And then look at 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 1, not in word, but in power. 1 Thessalonians 1, look at verse number 5. 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, the Bible says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance as you know what manner of men we were among you, for your sake. And so it is not coming word, but in power. Pastor, yes, sir. In uh, Corinthians 4.20, when he's talking about um, the people being puffed up, he's talking about, I'm trying to understand uh, what he's talking about. It's, it's people basically thinking they know that kingdom just by them uh, knowing the word or by likely studying it. 
Hold on, let's see here. First Corinthians 4 and so verse 21, right? Well, 19. Yes, he's actually, he's actually being challenged. Okay, his authority is being challenged. And if you look, if you look at the beginning of the chapter, you see that he says, "Let let let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the ministries of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you." Or of man's judgment, yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the Lord. Okay, so he's being he's being uh, challenged. His authority is being challenged. Okay, he's trying to convey to them, listen, I'm not doing this in my own free will. Uh, I, I, I was sent by God, and he's the one that judges me. Verse 5, therefore judge not them before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a eager transfer to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that not, not one of you be puffed up for one against another, okay? For who maketh thee to be different from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now when thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Now ye are ye are fool, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as king without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. For we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Ye are weak, we are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor working with our hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offspring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Okay? And what makes it worse is that the people challenging him were people that he went to the Lord. You see? And so, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. Okay, so yes, he's being challenged. His authority is being challenged. And uh, they they were not even taking care of him. They were not ministering to him. They were not supplying his needs. He had to work, he had to work actually with his own hands to supply himself. And that's how badly they treated him. Okay? So that's the answer your question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, the kingdom of God is is not in word, but in power. And, and the kingdom of God, the power of the kingdom of God, okay, you can't see it, and you can't touch it. <clears throat> but it's like, it's like, uh, the Lord told Nicodemus in, in uh, John chapter three, remember the wind? He said about the wind that you can't see the wind but you can see the tree moving because of the wind. So you don't know where the wind is coming, you don't know where it's going, but what you do see is the effects of the wind on the tree, okay? That's the power of God. That you can't see it, you can't touch it, 
but you can see the effects. Okay, uh, a lower example, okay, would be what causes an alcoholic to give up the drink and stop cussing and, and doing drugs and become a, 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 a good father and a good husband and to live right. What causes a man to do that? It's the power. That's the power of the gospel. To convert a soul. That's the power. Okay? That's the kingdom of God. That's where the power is. And no religion has this power. Only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So it's not just in words. It's not just words that people say. It's not just creeds. Because anybody can have a religion. Anybody can have creeds. But what, what separates uh, a relationship with Jesus and the rest of the world is the power of the gospel to convert a soul that is lost into a soul that is saved. And like 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's the power. You see, the religion can't do that. Creeds can't do that. Okay? Only the power of the gospel can do that. And that is where the power of the kingdom of God is. It's in the gospel that it can transform a sinner into a holy person. That's where the power is. And so uh, look at John 18.36. John 18.36. Jesus answered, in John 18, 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Hence, meaning here. Thence, meaning there. Okay, so my kingdom is not from here. That's what he's saying. It is not a political kingdom. The kingdom of God, okay, the sword was never shaped with the hand of the Lord's churches. Okay? Listen to this. The sword was never shaped with the hand of the Lord's churches. Okay? There's a problem right here that we confront right off the bat. What's the problem? Trying to use the gospel message, trying to use religion trying to use the church to better the world's condition. Okay? That's a problem there. That's not the reason Jesus came. Right. He didn't come. You can help people. There's nothing wrong with helping people. But you can give them blankets and you can give them foods. But none of those things have the power of the gospel. Okay? It is not a political, the church is not a political uh, uh, entity. It is not a political organization. Okay? It is separate. It works together with the government, but it's separate. Okay? You cannot use it as a political tool like many attempt to do. God's work is to be done only with the sword of the spirits. Okay? Not with politics. Sword of the spirit. Ephesians chapter 6, 17. Ephesians 6, 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And then in Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter number 4, Look at verse number 12. The Bible says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? An M16 cannot do that. A 9 millimeter cannot do that. Okay? You, he, he just said, My kingdom is not of this world. And what are we trying to do as human beings? We're always trying to make it of this world. And it, it doesn't work. Okay? Did you have your hand up, Brother Boy? Mm -mm. Okay. 
And so, uh, look at uh, John chapter 18 again. John chapter 18, because the disciples tried it already. Okay? They tried it. And look what happened. When they tried to make it into a political uh, 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 force. John chapter 18, and look at verse number 3. The Bible says, In Judas, having received the band of man, John 18, 3, and Judas, having received the band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Okay? That's the world. That's how the world does things. Okay? With, with material weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Okay? Just with his voice. Okay? They were knocked to the ground. But he said, I am he. Okay? That's just the word of God right there. And so, um, verse 7, Then I see them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. And therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Meaning the disciples that were with them. Let them go. That the same might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me. Uh, of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Marcus. Okay? Hey, leave it to Peter. I mean, he, they would have to be here. Who else could it be, right? And so he takes his sword. And if you think that, that he was aiming for his ear, he was not aiming for his ear, okay? Uh, but the Lord tells him that Jesus said unto Peter, put up the sword into the sheath. The cup which my father had given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. Okay, now go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Again, this is a parallel uh, scripture in Matthew. And in Matthew 26, 52. Matthew 26, 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Okay? Does that tell you that, that the church is a is a military fortress? No, it's not. Where does the power of the church come from? It doesn't come from weapons. For our weapons are not carnal, okay? But mighty through God. So he says, David. Take the sword to perish with the sword. And then in verse 53, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But now then shall the scripture be fulfilled. It does it must be. Okay? And so, again, showing us right there that the kingdom of God is not of this world. You cannot try to equate the things of the world with the kingdom of God it doesn't work okay uh, neither are we supposed to do that we're warned not to do that okay the church the power of the church is in the Lord Jesus Christ okay and, and look at his word all he did was speak and it fell down it is nevertheless a kingdom that brings real tangible suffering to its subjects Okay, the kingdom of God does bring suffering to its subjects. That means that all believers will suffer. Look at 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians 1. In verse 5. 2 Thessalonians 1, 5. The Bible says about... Um, let's pick it up in verse 3 for context. 
Paul says here, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because of your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounded, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Okay? So they're going through persecution. Verse 5, which is a manifest, manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Okay? Our persecution and our tribulation is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. That ye may be found worth be found worthy, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Okay? That is it, it's 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 like he says in another scripture, it is appointed. We are appointed to it. Okay? It is part of our appointments to uh, suffer persecution. Revelation 1:9. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Revelation 1, 9. The Bible says, I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? So he was... He was in prisons in an island called Patmos. Okay? He was in prison. He was cast out. And the reason? For the word of God. Okay? And for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He followed Jesus. So therefore, he was bad. Nobody they didn't want him preaching. And the only way they could do it is to put him away somewhere. Okay? And that's what they did. And so, uh, the kingdom of God, even though we cannot touch it, even though we cannot see it, it nevertheless brings tangible sufferings to its subjects. Look at the first, uh, excuse me, Second Timothy. Second Timothy. <clears throat> Second Timothy 3.12. This is the one I was misquoting. Second Timothy 3.12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It doesn't say could. It doesn't say perhaps may. No, it says shall, which means certain. We will suffer persecution. Okay? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Matthew 5 and verse 10. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 10. Jesus says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we see here that persecution for righteousness sake, okay? Because of the name of Jesus. We are persecuted because of Jesus. They tried to persecute Jesus, okay? Remember what Paul was saying on the way to Damascus? And he saw the bright light and he fell to the ground. And the Lord Jesus said, why persecutest thou me? Now, wait a minute. He was going after Christians. That shows you that when people persecute you, they're not really persecuting you. They get to the tribe to persecute Jesus. And you represent Jesus. For them is a way to get to Jesus. To persecute Jesus. Because they hate him so much. And Acts chapter 14. In the book of the Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. <clears throat> look at verse number 2. Acts 14 and look at verse number 2. I'd like to, I want to show you the, the, the persecution that, that they're going through, okay? In verse number 2 it says, <clears throat> we'll pick it up in verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But 
the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Okay? So they're starting to get persecuted. Look at verse 4. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. <clears throat> verse 5. And when there was an assault made, both the Gentiles and also the Jews, with their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and to Derb, cities of Laconia, and unto the region that lies round about. So they moved away from the from the persecution. Okay. Look at, look at verse 18. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch in Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having what? They stoned him. Okay? They stoned the preacher. Okay, so Paul is stoned, okay, and they think he's dead. What do they do with his body? Well, they drew him out of the city, okay? They pulled him out of the city, supposing that he had been dead. How be it as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Durr. His job wasn't done yet, okay? So it was not ready to go. That, again, that shows you your appointment, okay? The appointment that we all have with God, okay? Nobody can hurry that appointment. Here they try to hurry Paul's appointment, but it wasn't his appointment yet, and God sent him back, okay? I think that this, this is where he speaks about being left stoned and being left for dead and going to the third heaven, okay? This is probably right here. Okay? And nobody can take the life out of you if God doesn't allow it. Okay. If it is your appointment, God will allow it. But nobody can nobody can usher in your, your device. Nobody can take your life from you. No one, not even the government. Okay? Not angels, not principalities, because you belong to God. You're his property. Okay? When it is your time, he will take you home. However that is, only he knows. Nobody knows that. Okay? And so, the point is that the kingdom of God is not, you can't touch it, you can't see it, it's very, very powerful, okay? And it does bring suffering to all believers. All believers that stand for Christ are going to suffer if they haven't been suffered already. And if you study church history, there's books written about all the sufferings of believers. Tons and tons of them, okay, uh, have already suffered. Secondly, the kingdom of God is invisible. The kingdom of God is invisible. Luke 17. Luke 17. Luke chapter 17, verse 21. The Bible says, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It is within you. Look at John, John chapter 3. Again, the Lord Jesus speaking to Nicodemus is the one I was referring to earlier. John chapter 3, look at verse number 8. He says to Nicodemus, verse 7, Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. What does, what does this born again look like? Okay? Well, this is what it looks like. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirits. Okay? That is with the power of God. Power of the gospel lies. 
The power of the kingdom of God lies right there. It is in the transformation of a person. Okay? You don't know where the wind is coming. You don't know where it's going. But you see the, the leaves of the tree moving. It's referring to the effect that the gospel has on a person. Okay? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It's made new again. All the things, everything that he's ever done is forgotten, forgiven and forgotten. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is where the power of the gospel lies, right there. And you can't touch that and you can't see that. Okay? It's, it's, it's like the wind. You can see the wind, but you don't know where it's coming and you don't know where it's going. You can only see the effects. You can only see the effects of the gospel on a person. A person has been transformed from a, a drug addict, from a prostitute, to live a holy life. From being a, 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 a homosexual to living rights. Only the power of God can do that. Religion does not have that. The government, psychiatrists, they can't do that. They don't have that kind of power. It is only in the gospel that the power lies. Okay? And... We are barely understanding it, uh, as little as we can understand of it, okay? And uh, the kingdom of God is invisible. It is within you. The kingdom of God is manifested or revealed only in the fruit resulting from the miracle of regeneration, okay? The miracle of regeneration. The miracle to make a person new again. That's the miracle of regeneration. To make the person new again. To be gotten us again, to be born again, to start over again, fresh, clean. That's the power of the gospel. Okay? It cannot be it cannot be touched. You can't touch it, you can't see it. You can only see the effects of it. Okay? It's effect on a sinner. Look at that. Look at us at uh, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14 Romans chapter 14 and verse 17 Romans 14 and verse 17 the Bible says so the kingdom of God is not meat and drinks not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost Okay? The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. That is, it is not visible, tangible things that you can touch. But it is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy. I put a note here. Effects on a sinner who trusts Jesus Christ. That's the effects. Righteousness, peace, and joy. To live right. To stop drinking. To stop doing drugs. To stop cussing. To want to read the Bible. To want to go to church. To want to love God and serve God. Those are the effects of the gospel, okay? That is the kingdom of God, the power of the kingdom of God to transform a person. Those are the effects, okay? It is not in things that you can touch or see. It is not in words. It is not a formula, okay? <laughs> we, we as believers can barely understand it. But we see it. Why do we believe it? Because we see it with our eyes. And what we see in a person, we believe that, okay? We believe that. It's amazing, though, that even though we see it as believers, our eyes have been opened, and we can see clearly now, and we can see spiritually. But isn't it amazing to you that, for example, my family, when I was a lost man, I was the life of the party here in El Paso. But when the Lord saved me, I came back. And seeing, they still don't believe. Seeing, they still don't believe. And now they just hide. And they don't want to be around. They, 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 they see, the, they see the, the transformation. But they're like the Jewish people. It's the, the blinders are still on. It's, it's almost like they willingly will not accept it. It's almost like the Pharisees, they willingly will not accept it. They, they know something's different, and, and they can't comprehend it, but you don't want anything to do with it. Just get away from it. 
Why? Because it's going to start to affect their life. That's why. They don't want it affecting their life. They want to keep their lives the way there is. What's everybody trying to do right now? What's everybody trying to do right now? For over a year now, what is people trying to do? They're trying to go back to the way things what? Used to be. Isn't that what everybody wants? There's no such thing. They've gone forever. And you can hear that and you can say that and they still won't believe it. They're still trying to go back. They're still trying to go back. The Jewish people, when they were in the wilderness, what do they want to do? They want to go back. They don't want to go forward with the Lord. They just want to go back. Back into the world. Why? Because they love sin. That's it. They love sin. Okay? Because their deeds are evil. And the light shines on them. They don't like that. So they just want to go back into the darkness. They want to go back and hide. And continue doing what they do. And that's sad. It's real sad. So the kingdom of God is invisible. You can't touch it. You can't see it. You can only see its effect on a person. Okay? You can even see the effects on the person. Think about the blind. Think about the, the 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 blind man. Remember the blind man? Everybody was like, no, I'm not kidding me. He doesn't even guess him missing. But 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 they saw it. He was he was now able to see. After all those years, they saw him. Hey, I ain't doing blind man at all. Hey, I ain't doing blind man every day, passing by him. All of a sudden they sees. And they refuse to believe it. They just refuse to believe it. That's the way people are. They refuse to believe it. And that's it. So we'll stop right there. And uh, we'll take about 10 minutes. Because because the next the next section is, is going to be pretty lengthy. Uh, it's called, When Will the Kingdom of God Come? When Will the Kingdom of God Come? Okay, so we'll stop right there. Let's start the, uh, is that the, the service a little bit early?